All right, class, let's get going with Industrial Revolution number two. Uh, essential question, how did the Industrial Revolution impact the social classes in uh, Europe, uh, in particular in England? Uh, the increase of the middle class in the 1800s uh, became the golden age for the middle class. There were two levels of the bourgeoisie or middle class. Uh, there was the upper and lower. The upper bourgeoisie, uh, typically bankers or financiers, people who handled money, the higher end merchants, uh, and the big industrialists. Uh, the lower bourgeoisie, smaller industrialists, professional men, and then you had some small businesses. Now, factors that uh, of the Industrial Revolution, factory workers and new social class. So there were so many people pouring into the cities, uh, and, and these factory workers made up a new uh, social class called the proletariat. Surplus of workers equated very poor working conditions. So there were so many people coming into the cities that the uh, large industrialists or the owners of these factories uh, had their pick of the litter and they did not have to uh, have very good working conditions because if someone complained, they'd just boot them and then they'd uh, you know, get somebody else. Um, there were actual poor houses uh, that emerged where people with no job or money could stay and, uh, and live. Now, Frederick Ingalls of 1820-1895 wanted to protect the proletariat or the working class. He lashed out at the bourgeoisie, thought they were taking advantage of the working class. Until 1850, factory workers did not share in the newfound wealth of the Industrial Revolution. After that point, it came in short increments. Uh, Ingalls works with Karl Marx, and uh, they, uh, you know, come up with uh, the Communist Manifesto or, uh, you know, communism, an extreme form of socialism. Now, some people, the Luddites, were a violent group of workers who attacked factories in northern England. Now, the Luddites were an extreme faction of uh, union workers, uh, but nevertheless, they, you know, represented quite a few people that thought that they should, you know, uprise against uh, the, uh, the factories uh, and the work, I'm sorry, the factories and the owners of those factories. Uh, they began organizing groups of proletariats uh, into unions. Uh, you had Robert Owen, 1771-1858. He was a Scottish industrialist who pioneered relations uh, between uh, these you know, big industrialists and the unions, improved health and safety, shorter work hours, tried to create a utopian society, but it collapsed. Uh, uh, fr emerging from that were Chartists, who began to seek political democracy, the right to vote for all men. So still at this time, and we're mostly talking about Europe, where the Industrial Revolution first took place, you had only the most wealthy being able to vote. The Chartist said all men should be able to vote. Uh, <clears throat> union action, general prosperity, and developing social conscious uh, led to improved working conditions. So slowly but surely, uh, things started to improve uh, in uh, the Industrial Revolution uh, era and, and in these factories. Now, uh, changing working conditions, uh, many adults scared off from factory work, uh, children exploited to take the place of workers lost, uh, oftentimes abandoned children from churches were put to work, so if you were some kid stuck in, uh, you know, an orphanage, uh, they'd say, you're going to work, make money for the orphanage. Uh, families worked together uh, upwards of 12 to 14 hours a day. So they did not want to be, uh, children did not want to be separated from their families, from their mother and father. So oftentimes entire families would go work in the factories or go work in the mines. Uh, 12 to 14 hour days uh, with little kids. Now the Sadler Commission investigated to improve conditions in the factories. Uh, the Factory Act of 1833 limited children's work day. Uh, so if you were, you know, uh, of a certain age, you could only work so many hours. Uh, <clears throat> and then after that, can't hire kids uh, younger than nine. The Mines Act of 1842, no boys or girls under the age of 10 to work in mines. Child labor after this rapidly declined. Uh, but before this, uh, children were often used uh, in horrible conditions that uh, oftentimes uh, deteriorated their health. They died or they were, you know, malnutrition. They never really grew up. Now, the social effects of the Industrial Revolution, largest population transfer in human history to urban areas. So many people lived out in the country and they moved to the urban areas. Role of the city changed from government center to industrial center. Family structure and gender roles uh, in the family also change. 
the working class injustices, gender and child exploitation, low standard of living issues. Uh, these are all things that came about due to the Industrial Revolution. Uh, <clears throat> gender oftentimes determined the role uh, with home for women. And, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, with women and men uh, oftentimes were the sole wage earners going to work in the mines or the factories. Now, the Industrial Revolution may have stemmed some uh, human catastrophes, such as overpopulation and rural poverty, severe in certain parts of Europe. Uh, and one classic example is the Irish potato famine. Uh, many Irish Catholics lived on rented land from Protestant Englishmen uh, in total poverty. Uh, and these uh, Catholic Irishmen uh, did not have the means or wherewithal to get themselves out of those uh, terrible conditions. Now, uh, potato, which was brought over during the Columbian Exchange, uh, became a staple crop in Ireland. Uh, it was not there before, uh, you know, obviously came over, but it thrived in Ireland, and they started, you know, uh, using it as a, as a staple uh, in their diet every day. Um, with an average man of eating 8 to 10 pounds of potatoes a day. That's a lot of potatoes. All right, potato disease in 1845 to 46 and 48 to 51, 1.5 million people died, and eventually 2 million left from 1840 to 1855. Uh, and this is the majority of them coming to America. Uh, Irish population in 1845, 8 million. In 1911, uh, you know, about half. Uh, so about 4 million people either died or left Ireland uh, during this uh, time frame. Uh, the debate of the Industrial Revolution, capitalists view it as a necessary positive step towards fulfilling human wants and needs, uh, whereas the socialists and the communists, you know, t the two extremes, view it as a further exploita uh, exploitation of uh, the have-nots, uh, you know, and that would have been like the proletariats, uh, by those who have the money. Uh, remember, history is no mystery. Take good notes.